What's going on guys? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than how we normally do things. We have a very special emergency crypto episode for you. Last week, we released our first crypto episode ever to the public. And that video is currently doing numbers. So many of you expressed really desiring more crypto content in the comments. But the thing is, we don't have much time to get you guys educated and up to speed. So my content team called an audible and we're gonna do whatever we can to spread this information before things shift and people get left behind. But before I even get into it, this episode is so important that we're gonna be doing a thousand dollar giveaway in the comments section below to make sure that as many people as possible see this video and can reap the rewards. All you have to do is drop a meaningful comment below, like the video, and a winner will be randomly chosen one week from today. Also, as always, make sure to share this video with your loved ones. This information is priceless and we cannot do this alone. Now, the video segment that we're about to show you in a minute is something that we filmed and released three months ago, but there's a good chance you've never even seen it before. At the time that this episode aired, the first Bitcoin ETF had literally just been approved by the SEC, followed by another 10 Bitcoin ETFs in the same few days. And since then, Bitcoin went on a 43% run in less than 30 days and has since cooled off a little bit and is now only up about 25% three months later. I also foreshadowed the Bitcoin halving in this video and its positive implications on wealth creation opportunities, which occurred almost exactly one month ago. In this original video, I gave everyone a legitimate opportunity to enter Bitcoin when it was at around 50 to $52,000. And today it's at $65,000. Historically, Bitcoin enters its price discovery phase roughly four to five months after the halving date occurs. That's 120 to 150 days, which puts us in the range of between late August and mid to late September for us to enter into a full blown bull market crypto cycle. If you believe in what we're doing here with the brand and you trust my teachings, as well as my genuine desire to help as many of you as I can, I need you to listen to me very closely here in what I'm about to say. If you are not currently allocated into crypto, you have maybe three months to get your shit together, put in your 40 plus hours of research, pack your bags, and buckle the fuck up. Of course, none of this is financial advice, and you should assume I'm just some broke hippie on the internet who doesn't know what he's talking about. Having said that, I've been yelling from the rooftops for about six months now about how the Bitcoin ETFs were coming and that they were going to be a key catalyst that was going to usher in our next bull market liquidity cycle in the cryptocurrency space. For anyone paying attention, I've been endlessly talking about the fourth turning and how the fall of the US dollar and the United States as a world power is coinciding with the rise of cryptocurrency and various decentralized technologies and stores of value. But I can't help but feel not enough of you have been listening. So please, if you care about your future and your family's future, give me the next 30 minutes of your time and then you can decide for yourself whether or not you're willing to pass up a generational wealth transfer opportunity. My family is already set for life. I don't do this for me. I put out content like this to try to help you, but I can only lead a horse to water. Now, let's get into this video. Uh, we're going to start off with our first segment of the show, which is positive news. And so uh, I'll pitch it over to you, brother. What did you uh, pick out for this month's positive news? All right. So 
my piece of positive news is something that's much more so in my wheelhouse. There was a lot that has happened in the last two-ish weeks, but one thing that I wanted to highlight, because it's going to be kind of a probably a recurring theme today, is around the financial markets and such. So a few days ago, we had the SEC come forward and post what was apparently a fake tweet (laughs) from their account being hacked that said the Bitcoin ETF was approved. And then they walked it back and said, our account was hacked. We, We do not support Bitcoin or whatever it may be. So the market's, you know, going through up, down pandemonium. And the approval date for the Bitcoin ETF that we've been waiting for has been January 10th. We've been waiting for that for a long time. I'll say 40% or so of the market that, from my perspective, has been in complete disbelief. Uh, I don't know in your circles, Mm -hmm. Aaron, but a lot of people are just sitting on the sidelines, not really taking this seriously and weren't actually thinking anything was going to happen on January 10th because maybe they don't have the access to behind the scenes resources and such. But it was very, very apparent to me many months ago that this was not a joke, that this was going to happen. When you see players like BlackRock get involved, it's pretty much game over. Yeah. Yeah. This is an article from yesterday from the time we're filming this, January 11th. So who knows? Who knows how this is going to age by the time this comes out. But (laughs) yesterday we had 11 ETFs approved by the SEC. So I'll kind of skim the article for you guys. The Securities and Exchange Commission said it approved 11 applications, including BlackRock, ARK Invest. So that's Kathy Woods. All my students will be very familiar with her. Uh, Fidelity, Invesco, Vanek, despite warnings from some officials and investor advocates that the products carried risks. So this is massive. Obviously, if you're like deep in crypto or you're an OG in crypto, the last thing you want is government involvement in crypto. The last thing you want is big banks involved in it. It's kind of an oxymoron, right? Those two things don't go together. Right. Having said that, we can't control that. So as an investor, all you can really do is front run the whales and capitalize off of their greed, essentially, right? And their agendas. So for the average person, this is a massive opportunity because what's about to happen now is the media industrial complex, one of the, I'll say the biggest propaganda machine in the world, is about to funnel all of its intention and attention and resources at marketing and creating propaganda campaigns to get the mainstream to buy their products. Mm -hmm. And their products are going to be Bitcoin ETFs. For those of you who aren't very familiar with what that means or what ETFs are, that's an exchange traded fund. Basically think of it as a centralized company owns a basket of assets or a select asset class, and they own it for you And then you buy into their ETF product, which is a separate product from the underlying asset. And you get to benefit from the price action of the asset, but you don't actually own the asset. Wow. Having said that, I would never recommend any of you listening to this (laughs) buy these products. But that isn't the point of why this is such good news. This is a revolutionary day because this is the first asset class in our lifetime that stands a real chance at replacing the fiat-based monetary system that we've been dealing with since 1913, right? Most of our listeners will be aware that our dollar has been devalued about 32 times since 1913 with the creation of the Federal Reserve. And so, of course, you know, all of us, you know, we talk about metals, gold and silver, but how realistic is that in this day and age, right? Yeah. Something like Bitcoin comes along, it solves these problems. It has inherent caps to its supply. And now what you're seeing is a massive, massive boost in demand. They're anticipating about 50 billion in inflows in the next two years. What's important to understand about this whole thing is Is not that I'm a proponent of the ETF itself. I would never buy it. It's not that. As an investor, all you're looking at is demand and supply, basically. And 
demand is about to skyrocket when you have everyone and their mother talking about Bitcoin, every news station promoting Bitcoin, because these companies, the Black Rocks, the Van X, the Fidelities, they're going to put an ungodly amount of spend, advertising spend behind marketing these products because the way that these companies work, if you're not familiar with ever buying into a hedge fund or an ETF or an index fund, they charge you a percentage that could be 0.5%. It could be 5%, but they charge you an annual percentage to invest your money for you. That's how they make their money. They don't charge you to use the product. They take a percentage of your total lump sum that you put into the product to invest with them. And that's APY? And so, kind of. So basically their business model is getting as many customers as possible using their products because they're going to get a tiny percentage of that. And it's essentially a race, right? Because there is a limited amount of Bitcoin. No more will ever be created in existence. Mm -hmm. And you have people like Michael Saylor trying to buy up 1% of the entirety of Bitcoin. <laughs> and now that the banks and you know the powers that be, if you will, are entering the race, it's basically going to be a situation where Whoever buys up the most Bitcoin is going to be able to offer the, the largest amount of customers an opportunity to buy from their Bitcoin ETF, if that makes sense. In other words, you can't have an amount of customers buying into your Bitcoin ETF that exceeds the amount of Bitcoin that you yourself hold on your books. So they have to first buy it. This is part of what the SEC regulated. They have to actually hold it, unlike fractional reserve banking, right? Mm -hmm. They have to hold the underlying amount and then you buy that amount in paper. You don't actually own it. That's a whole other issue. That's why I don't recommend buying it. But uh, so this is going to be a ridiculous catalyst. And as we head into 2024, 2025, we have the Bitcoin having in a few months. Uh, things are going to get crazy. So, oh, that's right. Maybe this isn't a, uh, you know, stereotypical like uh, a kitty was saved from a tree piece of positive <laughs> news. But if you understand the financial markets like I do, this is revolutionary. This is the yeah. first real opportunity for the average everyday person to, number one, this is just history to, you know, be a part of history. But number two, this is the fairest system we've had proposed in our lifetime By and far. really in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. So this is up there with the creation of the Federal Reserve. What's happening right now is an, a serious fight for power and regulators were kind of caught off guard and they had their hand forced. The SEC did not want to approve this. They got to a point where the big dogs who are more powerful than them, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards came in and were like, this is going to happen do your job. Yeah. And up until that moment, the SEC was not even willing to consider this stuff. So very interesting. Your average everyday person who, you know, may not have been paying attention to this, they're going to really start to pay attention to this and they're going to feel strong FOMO in the coming months yeah. as, you know, the price continues to go up and as your Uber drivers talking about it and as your grandma's talking about it and all these types of things. <laughs> this is, you know, what what I do for a living and what we do for our students. The point is you front run the whales. You're in long before the whales get in. And when a whale jumps in a pool, there's a massive tidal wave, right? And you ride that wave. Surf that wave. So that's what we do. It's an exciting time to be alive. This is something that yeah. once again would not happen in a first turning, a second turning or a third turning. Mm -hmm. This is another sign, just like so many of the things we're going to go into today of a fourth turning. Mm -hmm. This is a shift, a societal shift, a systemic shift in the way that value is thought of, transferred, and stored. And if you can really sit with what I just said, that is a massive idea because you can't just come out overnight and say, hey, you know those things you have in your wallet that you call dollars? Yeah, those don't actually have any value. We're not using them anymore. Yeah. Instead, we're going to use seashells. People can't just shift their ideologies overnight on what they consider to have value. It took many, many, many years for people to start to believe that the fiat currency had value. 
so it also on the inverse of that t is going to take many years for people to shift out of fiat and view other things as having value. Mm -hmm. And we're in the middle of seeing a societal shift where, you know, a few years ago, people would not touch Bitcoin. It was going to zero. BlackRock was the biggest proponent of that with all of their articles about how it, it had no underlying value as a trash asset. They wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Meanwhile, they were buying it behind the scenes. Welcome to the game. <laughs> Once they allocated enough, now they turn on the marketing machine and they want you to pump their bags. Yeah. So this is just the way that it is. But what's exciting for me as, you know, a fan of innovation and a student of, you know, all things really innovation and, and societal change. What's fascinating for me is the implications of a society in which we have an actual sound money that can't be manipulated. You can't expand the supply of Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, every halving, the supply gets cut. So what's about to happen in April when we have the next Bitcoin halving? And that reduces the sell pressure on Bitcoin. And simultaneously, we have dozens of ETFs now funneling tens of billions in ad spend to get everyone to buy their products. You do the math. So it's an exciting time. That's my piece of uh, that's my piece of news. And you guys can check out, you know, any of these articles. As I said, you know, we have certain analysts talking about 55 billion over five years. We have other analysts talking about 50 to 100 billion this year alone. So regardless of, you know, where you stand, this is going to be an astronomical influx like we have never seen. And I want to clarify the difference and why this is a generational opportunity and isn't the same as talking about any other trend in our lifetime. Here's the one difference. When you're talking about a stock, when you're talking about a fiat currency, when you're talking about any other trend, there is not a finite supply. I don't know how much our audience knows about the stock market, but all you have to do is go through a stock split or print more shares and you devalue your investors, right? Mm -hmm. So if a company started out and there were 100,000 underlying shares to start with, as that company grows in value, they do something that basically devalues the investors, but it's, it's considered commonplace in the stock market. They will expand the amount of shares. So if you were an initial holder and your shares were worth a certain amount, now they're worth a little bit of less. They get diluted basically over time. And the same thing with a with a fiat currency. They print it, they print it, they print it. This is fundamentally different. Even gold, we consider that to have intrinsic value, but gold is mined from the earth and we haven't excavated all of it, have we? So there's not even as strong of a finite supply of gold or silver Great because point. they can just go mine more. The only reason gold has inherent scarcity is because it requires a lot of resources and it's not easy to mine gold. That's the only reason. Bitcoin has a certain amount in existence and it will never have an additional amount past that. That is a revolutionary idea. And so we don't have the mathematics or the experience to wrap our head around what the price action implications of that are going to be. So exciting time. Buckle up. If you are not allocated at all into crypto, you have, you know, very little about it. Now would be the time to, uh, to dive in at the very least. Wink, and wink. if you are congrats uh <laughs> those of us who who try to be uh you know more of the early movers in the know um it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a wild ride yep um can you scroll up to the top of this article there was one line that i thought was amusing the sec said it approved 11 applications including blackrock etc despite warnings from some officials and investor advocates that products it's these products carry risks Mm -hmm. It's like, that's because they were shitting all over cryptocurrency for so many years. And now they're like, Hey, buy crypto through us. And so they have to yeah. be like, well, you know, it is risky. We weren't totally lying earlier. It's like, Oh, cause stocks aren't risky. Any investment isn't risky. <laughs> Bitcoin's uniquely risky, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things where that it's kind of hilarious. The sec, when they did finally approve it, 
literally put out a statement, Gary Gensler clarifying that this does not mean that we support or recommend <laughs> Bitcoin. We're just approving the Bitcoin ETF. It's like, wait, what? What sense does that make? They're like, we wish we didn't have to do this, but we know y'all are going to buy Bitcoin. And so we want to control it as much as possible. Literally, it's like a tail between the legs. Tell us yeah. you're owned by BlackRock without telling us you're owned by BlackRock. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that the, the weird fake tweet thing that happened was like a purposeful market manipulation strategy? Or did they really get hacked? So that's interesting because we have like senators and everything. I don't know if you saw that, but multiple uh, congressmen, senators calling for a, a legit investigation into that. Because if any other company, person, influential figure did that, they would be experiencing serious repercussions. Right. But the ones who are supposed to keep us safe in the financial markets are the ones who manipulated the market right there. Right. Uh, I saw some stats that a uh, hundred billion in uh, call options got wiped out from that. So like that's that's a lot of people's. You know, you're playing around with a lot of people's uh, wealth when you're doing things like that, manipulating the market, causing it to flush down and such. Um, you know, the longer you've been in the market, it's just another day in the market. But at the right. same time, you can't you can't downplay something like that. So yeah, I think that I think that that was scheduled for the next day and uh, someone basically dropped the ball <laughs> and posted it early. Otherwise, goodness. you know, there's some more conspiratorial theories, but I'll go with that as my base case. I just think uh, the ball was dropped. It was posted early. And yeah. then it's like, you know, at that point, you might as well say it's approved because it was the day before we already saw what they were going to say. Yeah. They just had to walk it back because it was a little early or whatever it may be. So yeah. it's been interesting. And it'll also be interesting to, uh, track this by the time this episode comes out a lot will have transpired so <laughs> hopefully hopefully this age as well let us know nothing, in the comments uh, nothing catastrophic happens yeah well let me try to put what you just said in layman's terms for the uh economic neophyte like myself to understand <laughs> you're talking about banks you know we don't have real money in our society it's all fake money meaning when you go to the bank you deposit a hundred dollar bill into your bank account you think the bank is storing that $100 for you. But actually, it's literally disappearing into the ATM, never to be seen by you again. And the bank's giving yep. you credit into your account. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it looks fine to you because then $100 of credit shows up in your account. But if the bank were to fail that day, you ain't getting that $100 back. Yep. It's there. So it's really like a loan you're giving the bank. That's the way they see it is a loan. This is why they want to make all money digital and they want to make money as ethereal as possible, right? So they can control it. And we're going to get into that more later with the CBDC stuff. But this is why Bitcoin is such a financial revolution, because as you were saying and explaining Bitcoin, there is a finite amount, there is a limited amount. And when you have Bitcoin, you actually hold it right on your wallet, on your ledger. And nobody else can get it from you because it has a certain QR code type of thing. Um, what do they call those long links? to your wallet. It's a transaction block. ID. Yeah. You have a long transaction ID that's attached to your blockchain wallet that only you have access to, right? So you actually are owning that asset, that digital asset. And so the, uh, the big whales and the big banks and investment corporations don't like that because they can't control your asset anymore. So what they've essentially done with Bitcoin, I've heard, um, I think it was Michael Saylor describing Bitcoin like a Trojan horse into the financial yep. system because mm -hmm. it's this nuclear asset that just like it's the number one asset over the last decade by far the top performing asset in the world and so obviously anyone who wants to make money likes to find what the top performing asset is so it's it's impossible for those financial elites to resist investing in something that's blowing up like bitcoin does every couple years and so it's yep. a trojan horse in that sense that even the biggest institutions won't be able to resist investing in it and yes. that's kind of when the Trojan horse will become unleashed and the virus gets disseminated into the economic system where everyone's going to want to start using Bitcoin now because we're yep. watching our government inflate the dollar by the day. Bitcoin's not getting inflated. It can't be inflated. So people are going to yep. eventually pick up the logic here and start using cryptocurrencies, probably most notably Bitcoin. And so the big whales don't want you to actually own that Bitcoin. They want to own as much of it as possible and make these ETFs where they say, hey, don't buy Bitcoin yourself. 
invest in our Bitcoin that we will take the risk for you and you can just, you know, make profits off of it percentage wise and, and all will be well. And it looks good to those who don't maybe understand the game at the level that you understand it, Jeremy, because they're like, oh, cool, less risk. I get to play in the Bitcoin market. Awesome. But again, it's not your Bitcoin, it's their Bitcoin. And so yeah. there's a lot of drawbacks that come with that. So the, the Trojan horse is already taking effect, as you kind of explained, in that these investment uh, companies can't resist uh, investing in it. And so now the SEC is forced to approve it because BlackRock and State Street have them under the, the arm, right? Under the, by the head. And <laughs> yeah. so they, they kind of like have forced their hand. And if we fast forward five or 10 years, we could be looking at a world where, you know, 80, 90% of people or something like that are actually using Bitcoin on a daily basis uh, to do transactions with. And that would be a, a much more fair economic system than the current one we're living under. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a fundamental shift from, you know, the swift banking system where if you want to send an international wire, not only are you paying, let's say $35, but you're having to wait two to three business days versus right. you send some Bitcoin and it's there in 20 minutes and it's cheaper. So yeah. there is no comparison. Yep. <laughs> it's just going to take some time because like I said, the idea of what money is and what value is and how it's transacted, it you can't just change that concept overnight in your mind. It, it takes people repetition and some time. Yeah, I want to give it an, an analogy real quick before we move on. Most of our audience should be familiar with the fact that BlackRock is buying up all of the real estate and that essentially their agenda is that you will own nothing right? <laughs> and you'll enjoy it. So you're going to rent from BlackRock in the future if you know if you don't get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess that's a message to us all, right? So the same way that BlackRock wants to buy up all of the real estate and have you rent from them, right. you're still going to have shelter, but you're going to not have ownership, aka control of your own destiny, right? This is exactly what is happening right now? They recognize the opportunity. They cannot pass it up. The risk of being not involved is way higher than the risk of being involved. Right. That's important. Now that that's the case, they're all racing to jump in the pool. They are going to swallow up all of the remaining supply and for the next however many hundred years we use cryptocurrencies for as a method of store of value and transfer of value, they are going to own it and you're going to lease it. That's what the ETF is. And you'll be it's happy. It's the same playbook and you'll be happy with <laughs> your uh, crickets and, and bugs. And Eating such. the bugs. The same exact playbook, yeah. right? So in the sovereignty space and in some of my content, um, I talk a lot about, and we hear this notion in the space in general about, you know, ownership versus control. And, you know, this is where it's kind of the same concept as why you want to have, for example, trust set up and why you don't want things in your personal name and such, right? Like the name of the game, if you're going for power, freedom, sovereignty, et cetera, is to control things, right? Mm -hmm. And usually that means you have to be the trustee with a fiduciary obligation over said thing. Same with this stuff. Crypto and Bitcoin is revolutionary because it is one of the first assets that you can actually control and own. Like when you buy a stock, you don't get mailed a, a stock certificate in the mail anymore. Right. You don't actually own a percentage of that company. You just own numbers on a screen. You own a representation of that. When you get money, you don't actually have any money. You have a representation of money in your wallet. This is different. That's worth studying. I had to say that again because it's it's fundamentally so simple that people might overlook it. Yeah. We but do. if you studied the last, you know, 500,000 years of civilizations, this is a really big deal. Wow. If you are not fired up after watching that clip, I don't know what else to say. I sometimes reflect on why I'm on earth during such an insane time period in history. And the more I've reflected on it, I truly feel that 
everything I have gone through in my life up until this moment has uniquely prepared and qualified me to be the man that I needed to be to help transition as many people as possible who have the eyes to see into this new earth and into these new systems that provide for the first time in hundreds of years a real opportunity for the average person to exit enslavement. But I also uniquely understand that not everyone can or will see or want to see what I am sharing. And that's okay too. My message today is for those of you who can discern the deeper implications of what I've been sharing and what life will look like for those who don't capitalize and take proactive action surrounding this generational wealth transfer and change in monetary systems that we are currently living through right now whether you're aware of that or not by the time the news reports it it will be too late and if after watching this video you're thinking to yourself okay i'm 100 percent all in on this i see where the world is going and i refuse to be left behind this time but you lack the confidence or the clarity on exactly what to research what to invest in how to gain an advantage in the markets how to think like the one percent how to structure your own asset allocation and so on we got you this is what i do for a living this is my life's purpose helping conscious families build generational wealth who are going to use that generational wealth to benefit humanity rather than enslave humanity to be direct I have unwavering confidence that we can change the trajectory of your family's life. If you commit to this path with no plan B, if you have the mindset that I just described and you're resonating with what I just shared, we would love to invite you to apply for the Level Up Collective Wealth Mastermind, where you will be surrounded by literally hundreds of other conscious investors, conscious millionaires, conscious entrepreneurs, conscious families, and heart-led leaders who are taking personal ownership over their individual role in creating the new earth. I'm gonna be very real with you right now. It is not too late to get yourself and your family positioned before things take off, but we do not have any time to waste. Every single day that passes is another day of less favorable risk reward when it comes to the assets that you're likely going to want to hold. I am not saying that as some fake urgency BS tactic like a lot of people on the internet use. I'm being honest with you. There are times where patience is a virtue and timing just isn't aligned and you should wait on things and do your due diligence and take your time and ease into it and there are times when the most aligned approach is to ring the fucking bell and let people know that the earth is about to flood and if you do not get on the raft you will die i firmly believe that we are in a situation the next few years where if you do not get on this raft, I don't know what will happen, but I can assure you, it will not be in your best interests. Having said that, if, however, you are someone who's feeling uncertain, skeptical, full of fear or doubt, questioning yourself, please do not waste either of our time applying for the LUC. We will continue to put out amazing free content, but we can only lead a horse to water. As a wise man once said, when the student is truly ready, the teacher will appear. Until next time, my friends, peace and love, everyone.